I have some PDF patterns to share with you that I have recently acquired in the sales and some of them were won in some competitions and I'll be pairing them to some of my fabrics. So stay tuned. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina. This is Lifting Pins and Needles, a channel all about sewing, limitless sewing. And I'm coming today from Chile, from my parents' backyard in the south of Chile, beautiful place. We stopped in the capital for a day to go fabric shopping and traveled down here the other day. I've been adapting, you know, <laughs> traveling is hard for me and just, you know, enjoying the time with my parents and my brother, my sister-in-law and my nieces. So you'll see a different surroundings here and the same barriers I have to filming. There are neighbors doing construction work all the time. So you might hear different bits and bobs. I'll try to not talk when they make their noise, but it's life and I'm filming from a home, you know? So, you know, there were recent sales and I had been making my wish list of patterns I wanted to have because I know that at the end of the year, these sales appear. So I'm never desperate to get a new pattern, you know, I'm, I'm happy to wait, I have patience. <laughs> so there are a few patterns I purchased. Other ones I'll share with you are ones I have won in sewing contests. So I didn't purchase them, but I did have them, so that's cool. And for some of them, I have fabric to pair them with. I don't have my fabric stash because I'm not at home, but I have traveled with some fabric, <laughs> as I always do. So I am able to pair some to fabric, not all of them. So. I want to give you some inspiration so you can get ideas too in the styles and what sort of fabrics I go for. Cashmere is a brand that specializes in sizes from 12 to 28 with larger bust cup sizes from C, D and then E, F and G, H. So it has those three groups. I have a C bust cup size and for these patterns I fall into the size 14 C, D cup sizes. So that and it gives me a really good fit. I've already had good experiences with this brand. And I had three patterns I wanted to purchase from them and I think they were 25% off I believe. The first one is the Webster dress and top and I really like this style. It has like a high-low hem with a V neckline front and back with these cute little straps on the back. I think they're adorable. There is side bust studs there and a little bit fitted on the top and then just a bit more flowy on the waist and hips. The pattern recommends lightweight wovens and I have brought this crepe with me from Brazil. I purchased this there as part of my stash from Brazil with the plan of making it this summer and it is I would say a light to medium weight. I wouldn't say it's light lightweight more towards the medium and I love this print. It's got red tones and those little black things and I think it'll be perfect for this pattern so that is my pairing to this one. The next one is a Washington dress. Now I don't have a fabric with me to pair right here and I love the idea of this dress because you can mix fabrics and I love mixing wovens and knits. Usually when I do it it's by not actually following the pattern instructions and just making adjustments on my own but this one has been designed to be mixed so the bodice is meant to be made with a knit fabric it's got a really flattering scoop neckline that suits the larger bust and there's, there's a midsection yoke that is meant to be made with heavier knits like ponty or stretch wovens and then the skirt that comes under there is meant to be made with a woven so i love the idea of this i love that it's drafted for that and designed for that and i love that i mean i can just imagine using up all my scraps to make like three tones color blocking and I just think it's a basic silhouette that is totally me it's not a full skirt you know I really like the style if you hear meowing look who's here look at this little kitty so my parents just recently adopted uh, two kittens these are about eight weeks this is a male the female is around here she might pop up if she comes i will show her to you but i've been bonding with them and just cuddliest little purring balls of fur there's a dog too you know <laughs> the chilton trench coat was released last year over a year ago and i've been eyeing it and overall i like the pattern i think the pattern has too many features when you look at the liner there's just too much going on there 
The Princess seems really cool to me because with a CD cup size I think I can get a good fit. It is single breasted so that's really flattering for a larger bust. And the two pack collar and the two piece sleeve really cool to me. Some of the top stitching details I like and there's an optional kick pleat at the back. I do not like from this pattern that cape that is on one side of the front and the back the epaulets and the belt so I would make this pattern as is but make it the simplest it can be probably use just a solid linen and make it a lightweight jacket maybe a bit shorter than the drafted length but the base of the pattern is there and I like it and that's why I got it I like that it's fully lined as well so that's always good in a jacket like that True Bias also had a sale going on and I got two patterns from them that I'd been eyeing. One of them hasn't been released for that long and it's a Calvin wrap top and dress and I'm putting pictures here everywhere. I would match it to a rayon twill. I think it would give nice drape and have this, uh, like the body to hold up this type of design. It's a wrap of course. There are side bustards and I know that True Bias sort of dressed for a C cup. Um, or this area of the neckline is finished with bias binding that extends into ties that wrap around and everything. Now I do think I would need to raise all that neckline for a bit more coverage <laughs> and I would have to do another trick to have like a double strap here because I don't like thin 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 bias binding but I know it can be done and I'm sure I can get something done that will give me more coverage here on this area you know but I like that it's a wrap top or dress that is got a slim silhouette so it doesn't have a full skirt if you look at it it looks like a straight skirt I wouldn't make it midi I would make it just above the knee I love it and I can't wait to make that one I also purchased the Southport dress from True Bias I've been eyeing this one for a while I think it's a really nice summer type pattern it's relaxed fit it is sleeveless there are buttons on the bodice and then like a gathered skirt but not that gathered because it's gathered through a drawstring you know at the waist and the length can be whatever but there is a long slit if you want to make it maxi version I have the perfect fabric this is meant for wovens and I have this um, look I don't know what this is some polyester that is crinkled and has some embroidery on it so it is sort of she it has drape um, I'm not sure what this is I really don't know what it is look how sheer it is but it's not thin thin like the chiffon I usually work with so I don't know it's like a crink crinkled crepe of some sort polyester I don't know but the embroidery is beautiful and I like the idea of having a dress that's brown with a little tiny embroidery I just like the idea and I can picture it in my head so that is the pairing for that dress. I would also make this dress out of a rayon twill or just a normal rayon. And I'd be super careful to not stretch out the arm side and the neckline because the rayon is terrible that way. But it's all good if you take the right precautions. The next pattern I obtained by winning a sewing contest on, on a Facebook group. And I was able to choose the pattern that I wanted from Sew House 7. And I chose a Mississippi dress. I like the look of that dress. I like that it's sleeveless. It's got really interesting design lines and like these panels. It's got little ties on the shoulders and like an empire cut with these just very strange design lines that call to me. And it's meant for wovens. You can see I'm always heading to the woven patterns. I love them. When I see a knit pattern, I'm like, yeah, no, you know, they just don't excite me as woven patterns do. And I have a chiffon, totally she, that I want to make this pattern. And I think I have enough just for a top. I don't think I'll have enough for the dress, but that's fine. And it's navy blue back with all these like green and sort of dark pink tones, yellows, roses and stuff. Um, I love this type of print and I can wear it with um, a navy blue cami underneath because it'll be totally she. I mean, this is she as can be, you know? So I'm excited to make that one and that was one that I got for free just for winning a contest. Recently, I made myself a coat, my red octave coat, and I got myself to cross that barrier I was making myself that I can't make coats because I live in Brazil and I don't need coats. But actually, you can make them just with lighter fabric. You can have the look of the coat without having to make them in all the warm, you know, thick fabrics if you live in winter weather, like real winter. 
So I went ahead and got the Romana coat from By Hand London. I've been eyeing this coat for a long time. I love every single feature. This is just a full on princess seamed, you know, welt pockets, two piece sleeve, fully lined coat, and I love all the features. I would make it out of linen. I don't have any linen to show you, but I do have linens at home. And the only change I would make to this one is that I think it's too long for what I like in coats. I like my coats to hit mid knee. So the octave coat that I've made was car length. It was sort of mid thigh and I lengthened it to mid knee. The Romana coat I would shorten to mid knee because that's the length of coats that I like. And because I can sew and make changes, I'm free to get whatever I exactly want. That is what I love the most about sewing. And that's why I always say about the channel Limitless Sewing because there's no limits really. You can adapt patterns, you can adapt styles to get the garment that you really, really want to have. And that's what I do constantly, you know? So I'm excited to try this one when I get back home and I have all the supplies, you know, the right fabric. <laughs> the next pattern I also won in a Facebook sewing contest and I was able to choose a pattern from a company I hadn't heard about before from Australia. It's called Pattern Union. So I had a, a look at all the patterns and there was one that really intrigued me and believe it or not, it's for knit fabric. <laughs> so I said that knit patterns don't usually give me that excitement that woven patterns do. But this one actually, I thought this is so cool. So this is called Sumeko dress and I'm sure I could make this into a tank top if I wanted to as well. What got me in the description was that it doesn't have side seams. So it's basically one extended piece. It's only got a center back seam and that is what gives it shaping. And then there are darts to give it shaping at the waist and those are optional. There's either two or one depending how much shaping you want. And I'm all for darts in knit patterns. I am all for darts in knit patterns. I really don't understand why a lot of designers don't put darts in knit patterns. Like because you can sew a dart in a knit fabric. You can totally do it. So when I saw this, I thought, oh, this is just great to make a really nice dress. It has nice shaping with dads, with no side seams. It could be really easy to make. So I'm excited to try that. And I have this fabric. They told me this was like an active wear fabric. And I think it is. It's, it's medium weight, I would say. And it's white on the other side. It's printed. And it, this print is totally me. It's got black and red and i can't wait i mean i could make this dress and it could be a really good like pool or beach cover-up because of the style of fabric it could get wet and like dry really fast and everything so i'm really excited to try this dress and this new pattern company pattern union the next pattern i've been eyeing for a long time as well it's a very popular pattern that a lot of people have made but i did my research and when i looked into a blog post full of hacks for this pattern that is when i was finally convinced and these are the Winslow culottes from Helen's Closet. So the only pattern I've ever made from Helen's Closet is a black wood cardigan. All the other patterns that they have aren't really my style. And these culottes I'd been eyeing and eyeing and just waiting for a sale. You know how it is. <laughs> so on, the, on their blog, they have a lot of hacks for this. And there are two hacks that I am drawn to. One is a flat front waistband with an elastic at the back. So instead of having those deep box pleats on the front and the back, the pleats are eliminated at the back and then you just bring in that volume at the back with an elastic and I like that I really like that I like the original version as well with all those box pleats and I think I would make mine sort of midi length I usually wear my culottes midi length and I would never wear a skirt that length but I will wear culottes that length it's just my self-imposed rules of aesthetics I don't know <laughs> don't even they don't make sense but the one that I really, really, really want to try first are the wrap pants. So there's a full step-by-step -step on how to modify the pattern pieces and how you can wrap them to the front or to the back. I think that is amazing. I love that. And I have the perfect fabric. This is a chambray, super nice. I think perfect for the drape that this pattern needs. And it's gray. This fabric was sent to me from Minerva.com in exchange for a blog post. And it's taken me a while to figure out what to do with this fabric. But now I know and I'm excited to do that. The next pattern is from Style Arc. Now I love Style Arc. I have been collecting a humongous amount of their patterns and I haven't sewn many of them just because I'm silly. I need to fix that. 
but this one I saw and it was totally my style it's the goldie skirt it's meant for woven fabrics it looks like a typical like straight skirt but those cuts on the side from the hips that curved shape on the front and the fact that it can be finished with buttons or a zipper just really called to me because it's a more complex variation of a pencil skirt not complex as such but just a step up from the basic pencil skirt that I love to wear I love that <laughs> and I have this denim with polka dots that was also sent to me by Minerva.com and it looks like this I think it's really cute and it'll make a really nice skirt and I have enough fabric here I have um, two meters I hope I can make two skirts from here one for me and one for my mum so we shall see I hope I can squeeze them out of there I hope <laughs> I hope the pairings of the patterns to the fabrics was helpful for you to give you some ideas of styles of clothing with types of fabric. That is my goal. I didn't just want to show you the patterns I got. I wanted something practical in there as well. Although I couldn't match all the patterns to the fabric. I think I got about three quarters of them. So that's good. <laughs> I do feel that keeping the channel going at the same rhythm is going to be harder. I have a lot of distractions. I'm going to aim very hard at getting two videos out a week so I can keep the consistency of the channel and I have been planning ahead and trying to figure out exactly what to bring to you each week so just bear with me I am not at my home I don't have a sewing room I'm just adapting you know going with the flow and I'm enjoying that I hope to see you again on Friday with another sewing video have fun and happy sewing bye I've tried to give you my soul but you can't love something you